Hello guys, this is Blitz Stage, and today we are going to discuss the solutions uh, or editorial for the Code Forces Round 803 that was held today, and we are going to discuss the problems A, B, C, and D. Hope you had a great round today, and let's just start with the solutions. So, first problem is problem A. We have been given an array with n minus one integers, and then we add their XOR, which is x at the end, and thus we create an array of n uh, integers and then we shuffle these elements and in this newly formed array you have to find which one was actually x and if many of them can be x you can just output any of them this is an interesting problem let me tell you how to figure it out let's say i have an array a1 a2 a3 and then x here we know that x is equal to a1 x or a2 x or a3 fine so now one property that has to be satisfied is that since uh, this equation satisfies you just XOR it with x so we do x x or x is equal to a1 x or a2 x or a3 x or x that is equal to 0 so you know that the entire array the XOR of the entire array must be equal to 0 and that is irrespective of uh, anything basically if you have uh, numbers which have a given XOR and then you XOR it with their own XOR their total XOR has to be 0 and this XOR is not dependent on any index or any number so now you must realize that since they have mentioned that there will be always an answer, there will always be an answer, XOR for any of the samples has to be 0. And let's say we know that the XOR is 0 now. Now uh, let's say if the answer was X, let's say X was what we had to pick. But what if I pick A2, would it be fine? Let's try to think about this. Now I know that A1 XOR A2 XOR A3 XOR X is equal to 0. Just XOR this with A2 once again. So a1 xor a3 xor x xor a2 and then I'm just xoring it with a2 again is equal to a2 since 0 xor a2 is also a2. Now uh, if you xor something twice you can just get rid of it. So I will have a1 xor a3 xor x is equal to a2. Now let's see this wonderful fact. Now the interesting fact is that even if my current uh, my earlier array would have been a1 a3 and x even then it uh, its XOR would have been A2. Any number can be an XOR of, uh, since the total XOR of the numbers is 0, any number is uh, has a value equal to the XOR of all the other remaining elements. So any element that you pick is fine. I hope you understand this mathematical uh, way. If you, you could do it, it for A2, you could do it for A1, you could do it for A3. Basically, any, uh, any AI is equal to the XOR of all the other elements since the total XOR is 0. That's what we have proved. So you just, and since the answer is always going to exist, just input, output any random number. So I just output the first element in the array and that is the correct answer. And any, any answer is correct. You could just have to input, like output an uh, element from the array. I hope that is clear. Let's go to problem B now. Okay. Okay, so in problem B, we have uh, n piles of sand where ith pile has ai uh, blocks of sand. And we want to have uh, uh, a pile is too, too tall if uh, it is great, if its height is greater than the sum of the heights of its neighbors. Now, I can take like k consecutive piles of sand and add one unit of uh, sand to all of them. And we want to have the maximum number of piles. Now one thing you got to understand, pretty interesting fact over here is that let's say k is something like 2, k is something like 2. Let's say I have these piles of sand, this, 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 some, some random piles of sand. Now what I want to do is that I want to increase the height of some pile of sand. That is because I want to make it too tall. But if I want to make it too tall, let's say I am choosing this element. Since the value of k is 2, you would always have to choose either this guy or this guy since k is 2 you either choose these two or choose these two if k is 3 you either cho choose these or this or maybe even choose both of these so is it helping you just think if it is it helping you let's say i have a of i and i have a of i minus 1 plus a of i plus 1 if k is equal to 2 to increase 1 here you always have to increase e 1 either here or here or both which is not good for you it will not help you uh, in becoming too tall. That is the most important observation in this problem. So you cannot make uh, any more tall uh, blocks of sand. That is because to make one of them tall, you also have to make their neighbors tall. Thus, 
like from the definition of uh, how how tallness works you will never be able to make someone tall which was not tall earlier but if k is equal to 1 if k is equal to 1 you just pick like random towers and make make their height infinite even the smallest one can become infinite because i just have to increase its height thus if k is not equal to 1 just uh, iterate through the array and check which ones were already too tall and those are your answer if that is not true we have to uh, if k is equal to 1 we can make any mountains we want tall now how many can we make let's say we have three this guy this guy this guy the only mountain we can uh, okay this is not mountains right it's like blocks of sand so we can make any block of sand too tall let's say we want to make this one we just choose this one and make it tall but by definition for a block of sand to be too tall it cannot be first last it has to be somewhere in the middle so and if we make one of them too tall we cannot make its neighbor too tall so we can make like roughly half of the elements too tall so for example we have three uh, blocks we can make one of them too tall what if we had four even for four you have to skip this one skip this one let's say you pick this one then you automatically can't take its neighbor so for four also you can only choose one but let's say you have five so i can make this guy tall and this guy tall so for five i can make two of them tall so if you make some calculations you will realize that it is like n minus 1 uh, it's like floor of n minus 1 divided uh, when dividing it by 2 so for odd numbers it is n minus 1 by 2 and for even numbers it is n minus 2 by 2 that is your solution so that is what i have coded i'm just basically using that uh, in c++ when you divide it gives you a floor so i just use the floor to write all of these cases together so that's the solution it was a interesting problem now let's move on to problem c okay i hope i'm recording yeah everything looks great so we move on to problem c okay so problem c says that uh, an array is three sum closed yeah, if for all distinct indices uh, the sum is also an element of the array so Uh, you need to realize that if you consider like a i a j a k it will be an n cube solution if you even if you just consider like i j k differently so there is no way that it's going to be a, a cubic solution so you have to think cleverly so how do we think cleverly let's think of something let's say i have like 2 3 and 4 or anything i have 1 2 5 <laughs> if i have these guys when i sum these up when i sum 2 3 and 4 up i get 9 So nine has to be there. If I sum three four nine, I get sixteen. Uh, so sixteen has to be there. If I sum four nine sixteen, that is twenty uh, nine. No, no, sorry, that's twenty six. That has to be there. So twenty six forty two fifty one fifty one has to be there, and so on, and you go on till infinity. So you just cannot have three positive numbers. What if I had three negative numbers? Minus two, minus three, minus two. So if I take negative numbers, just sum them up negatively, you get minus nine and minus sixteen, minus twenty-six, and so on. So you cannot even have three negative numbers. So your positive numbers are bounded by three. Negative numbers are bounded by three. Oh, sorry, two. Because if you have three, you are already gone. So you, you can just say if positive numbers greater than equal to three, just output no. That's it. Negative numbers greater than three, just output no. I just said it n o. Maybe you just don't understand it. It's just like uh, a short form. It's just a a uh, macro that i have defined which just like writes no and just returns the whole function so for in comp in contest it's like really fast for me to use this no that's how it works similarly i have this read functions and stuff which you can check out like they are not much used like logically they are just to write code much faster and to make it more clean now i have two positive guys two negative guys now how many zeros do i realistically need see you you will uh, have ai you will have aj ak al you just have four guys which are relevant in any in the whole problem so at one time you are only going to focus on four guys so what is the max number of zeros that may be, that may be relevant four uh, if you have a fifth zero where are you even going to put it at max you can have four zeros right so what i do is there may be like o of or like order n zeros there may be like uh, like 10 to the power 3 zeros which will make your solution much more complex like time complexity wise so i just choose four zeros if i have four zeros i will, if i have more than four zeros i'll just say i have four zeros 
because that's all i need because if my solution works gives me yes or no for four zeros it should give me yes or no for like 1500 zeros doesn't really matter so i have like uh, this this one here okay i don't know how to get rid of this but it should okay okay that's cool <laughs> okay so i have like uh, positive numbers two uh, like not more than two is irrelevant because you already have outputted no negative numbers more than two is irrelevant because you have already outputted no zeros more than four are irre irrelevant because they already cover all of the cases that we need so we just have eight guys so i just have an n to the power four solution here i iterate over all i's iterate over all j's all k's and all else and if i have a of i plus a of j plus a of k is equal to a of l that's fine so i do it for i take all different i j k's and i check if some l exists for these i j k's if they if it exists for all of the i j k's i just output an answer yes so the main like interesting thing in the problem was to convert this seemingly n to the power 4 solution or like if you are very fast n to the power 3 log n solution or n to the power 3 solution if you use unordered sets and stuff to something which just has like instead of n you just have eight guys so i can just iterate over all of them like just brute force them so i just that's what i do i just take like uh, count how many whatever is not zero i just input it into the array then i just check if i have more than four zeros i just make it equal to four so this is like uh, this is basically i just wanted to select zeros is equal to minimum of zero uh, comma four long long this is just another function that i use but you can just consider this this is basically what i'm doing and i just for all the zeros that i have i add another zero to the array and then i just like iterate through it very simply uh for i from 1 to m j from 1 to m if j is equal to i you, you just have to have i j i j and k must be distinct so if j is equal to i or k is equal to j or k is equal to i i'm just like not going through the actual code part i'm just continuing and if uh, everything is fine then i check there has to exist an else such that b of l is equal to b of i plus b of j plus b of k if it is true for all of these for all i j k s then we say ok is equal to true if ok is not true by the end of completing the l loop i just say no for this pair i j k i do not have a proper l i just say no and if it's true for all of the i j k s then my answer is yes so as i said earlier no just outputs no and yes just outputs yes that's how you solve problem c it was decently interesting i made a very stupid mistake i just wrote a here and unfortunately the samples were so weak that even writing a here passed so <laughs> Yeah, be careful i lost like 10 15 points be be careful though. now let's move on to problem d problem d is like actually interesting i really like it it's like a very simple idea but it's very interesting okay now how does this work let's go for okay so we have an array which has n uh, numbers and n is an odd number so you have odd number of numbers now what the jury does is it selects n minus 1 of these guys and pairs them into group of twos twos such that there are n minus 1 by 2 groups and then just swap them and then just swap them and after the swap since n minus 1 guys have been swapped one guy is left which is not swapped and you have to find this guy and you can ask queries when you ask a query you give two int uh, two guys uh, two integers l to r and you will get the sorted subarray al to ar now you have to find the element which didn't change in at most 15 queries okay cool so 15 like you just see the number you understand the technique like if you have done interactive problems you like half of the time when you start solving an interactive problem you just think where can i binary search and when they, when they give you so less queries it's obviously binary search so we have to binary search somewhere but you need to understand what happens in binary search so basically what happens in binary search is that you have a whole array you have a whole array and then you do some thing you try to make some measurement such that you can just disregard half of it you just want to make half of the array useless to so just uh, you just have to think of techniques by which you can uh, make half of the array useless for you like you are sure that that does not contain the answer that's what we want to do now let's think of how we uh, about how we can do this just a second i'll get my example okay 
let's just use the sample that we have because okay let's say we have something like 4 2 5 1 3 okay now if i tell you like uh, this is add a few more let's just say okay i don't know maybe it makes a problem now yeah so what we want to do is let's say we look at first half first half of the array and uh, if we query it you will get the response as 2 4 5 now what does this tell us the crucial observation here is that you can only do three things with a number number one thing you can do is do nothing you don't do anything with the number and you can do that with one of your numbers so second thing is you can swap it within your chosen set so let's say i'm querying over one to n by two maybe my elements are swapped within themselves swapped within my uh, queried range or they may be swapped outside my query range swapped outside these are the three options once you realize this the problem becomes simpler why this i have one guy here now if i swap elements within my query range both of them now have to exist so let's say i had three and six i'm querying from uh, one to six three and six were there originally they still got swapped so I have to have 3 as well, I have to have 6 as well. So interesting thing is that if you swap within your query range, you only get even numbers, like even number of such guys. You cannot have an odd number of such guys. That this is where the magic lies. If it is swapped outside, it's fine, nobody cares. Now let's say I'm querying over a range, let's say I'm querying over 3 to 7 while querying over 3 to 7 if i look in the array i say okay a3 are you within a3 to 7 a4 are you within 3 to 7 i ask this for all of the guys from a3 to a7 if they are within 3 to 3 and 7 if they are so i increment the answer by 1 now let's say i have two such guys two such guys which say okay i am from 3 to 7 then you can say for sure that this was one of these guys one of these pairs because the only guys who can say yes to you, who can say that yes, uh, I am, I lie within 3 to 7 and I am A3 and I am A4, A5, so on. Those can either be the ones which are doing nothing, which are just there in their own position or they are swapped within their queried range. If they were swapped outside, they would not, they would not like, while counting them, they would not lie between your current range. So, you know that this guy is even so if in your current range you get odd number of such guys which lie within your range then this do nothing guy also has to be in your has to be in this range because these these number of guys were even and you still got odd number of guys who are, who were initially in your range like from 1 to n and this after, even after swapping they are in your range so it has to have the do nothing guy so this is how you find out which region will contain the do nothing guy i hope that was clear I, try to explain the best I can so if there are any doubts you could definitely ask in the comments so if you look at a range and it has odd number of guys which well, like let's say you're looking at a range 3 to 10 and there are odd number of guys from a3 to a10 which have a value between 3 and 10 only even number of them would have been swapped within their range so that at least so this uh, range must contain the guy which does nothing after that you just employ like normal binary search techniques and uh, find out the answer i'll give you some tip, tips and tricks on uh, interactive problems so it is always better to have a, like a proper ask and answer function because sometimes like you may get confused you may forget forget one space one question mark okay this has a slight error i have just like missed one or two things but i'll just copy it and see okay yeah so i just missed the question mark over here that's why i was telling you so you have this ask function you can like ex explicitly make an ask function and make it return whatever you want so your code becomes like much simpler and much cleaner to write you can also have an answer function this is optional because it's just one line and then what i do is i input n um, 
I go from yeah. one to n plus one. So I you just have to write a binary search. So I uh, so how do I do it? Okay. So let's say this is my entire range. I look at this region. If it contains odd number of guys which say yes, I should be in this range. I know that the do nothing guy is also here. So I just like this was R, this was L. I just make a uh, mid is equal to R. Then I look at this part. If this also has like odd number of guys who say okay, I should be in this range. I take R here. Otherwise, I take L to be mid plus one because we know that uh, zero to mid does not have that guy. So that is how we increment. So I write binary search while L less than R. Uh, I find the mid and I check from one. To, I check from L to mid. Is this the re region which uh, contains the do nothing guy? If it does, I take like I have R is equal to mid. Otherwise, I have L is equal to mid plus one. And finally, whenever you write binary search in such a way, you do L less than R. Uh, when you can just answer L, you don't have to have an uh, like an integer which says answer and stuff. Like just L is the answer here. Now, how do you check? While checking, you just like ask for this particular range, so it gives me a vector, and then I iterate over the vector and ask uh, check for the number of guys which are less than, uh, greater than equal to L and less than equal to mid, so they lie within our range. So. And all of these guys, which should be in our range and are in our range, we increment them as answer. And as I said, if the num if the number of guys in answer is odd, it means that the do nothing guy also lies in this range. So I check if uh, it is odd, and if it's odd, I just say okay, yeah, the do nothing guy really does lie here. And thus we can implement our binary search. And thus in fifteen queries we can solve the problem. Uh, we'll not discuss E in this video, but yeah, these are the solutions for A to D. I hope you understood them. If you have any doubts, ask in comment. And thanks for watching.